Hello everyone, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Welcome to another video. I want to have a chat, a serious chat, about how we manage type 2 diabetes and how I believe our whole paradigm is wrong, the whole way we think, to the point where I believe future generations will absolutely laugh at us. Let's start from the beginning then. There are two main types of diabetes, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes tends to occur in younger people, it's often genetic, and it is caused by a lack of insulin. People don't have enough insulin. So obviously you have to give insulin to bring the blood glucose levels down because the pancreas isn't working properly. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, is very different. It is a disease caused by insulin resistance. In other words, in most people, the insulin levels are too high. And it usually occurs because of people's lifestyles. They have been consuming the wrong diet for many, many years before type 2 diabetes occurs. Again, too much insulin, so you are insulin resistant. And think about this for a moment. Now, ultimately, if other medications for type 2 diabetes don't work, what do we do? We give insulin, often in increasing quantities. And this is where there is a logic fail. Let me explain, but we have to go back first to the beginning. Type 2 diabetes is preceded by prediabetes, and before people have prediabetes, they have insulin resistance developing. And this now probably applies to maybe hundreds of millions of people in the United States alone, probably billions of people worldwide who are insulin resistant. And remember, this wasn't a problem a few decades ago. Our grandparents and great-grandparents didn't have insulin resistance. So what are the blood tests for insulin resistance, pre-diabetes and diabetes? Let's review these quickly. Well, fasting glucose would be one, HbA1c is another, and HOMA IR is another excellent blood test. I've made a video about that before. The link is down below. That's often an outstanding test to see whether or not you're developing insulin resistance before your glucose and HbA1c start creeping up. So what happens with type 2 diabetes? Insulin levels start creeping up because people have abnormal insulin spikes during the day because people are eating terrible diets now, high in ultra-processed foods and sugars, so your insulin levels keep on spiking, your body can't cope anymore, and eventually, boom, you don't have enough insulin to cope with the high blood glucose. So you develop diabetes, you start needing to be on medications, and then eventually you may need insulin. Your body has become overwhelmed, your cells have become packed with glucose, often other conditions develop as well. Obesity, for instance, through a process known as de novo lipogenesis, but both insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes will drastically increase your risk of further illnesses, inflammatory illnesses, other chronic diseases, Insulin resistance is probably one of the main drivers of high blood pressure as well, hypertension. And we don't talk about it anywhere nearly enough. But your body has already become compensated by the time you get to that point that you are officially diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and you're at risk of a multitude of other illnesses. So what do we do when people are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes? Well, in our modern mainstream culture, which is completely twisted, it is almost to the point now in the United States where it's normalized. It's normal to have type 2 diabetes. It's nothing to be concerned about. It can be treated with medications. This is, of course, a complete disgrace. And no surprises, it is led by big corporate interests at the top. Because type 2 diabetes is a huge money-making industry now. It's a bonanza. Let me share the following with you. So look at this here. Diabetes devices market size. Industry trends and analysis. The global diabetes devices market size was valued at $28.1 billion in 2022 and is expected to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 7.5% until 2030. That's staggering. And take a look at this here, diabetes drug market, all these different diabetes drugs, including insulin, other oral medications. Look at this here. The global diabetes drug market size was estimated at 61.87, so basically $62 billion in 2022, and is projected to hit around $118 billion by 2032, growing at a rate of 6.67%. That is a complete bonanza, but let's think about how we deal with this, how the culture 
tells people to think, well, you're diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, no big deal. You just start medications. Maybe you'll eventually need insulin as well. And there are millions of type 2 diabetics out there on insulin. Think about this for a moment. You have a disease caused by too much insulin. People are insulin resistant. And how do we treat it? By giving more insulin. And then people get more insulin resistant and then they need more insulin. Is there any other illness out there where we have that mentality? You have too much of something, so we give more of it. Now, I'm not telling everybody out there who has type 2 diabetes to stop their insulin. I am emphasizing that our whole philosophy is wrong. There is a very big upstream problem. And what should happen is, doctors should be able to sit down with type 2 diabetics or even pre-diabetics insulin resistant people and say this is the path you are on. You can either go one of two ways. You either continue down this path and you will need medications. You may need insulin one day. There's a fair chance you will need insulin. Your risk of many chronic diseases, inflammatory diseases will go up. I mean, look at what's happened over the last three years of the pandemic. Diabetes was one of the major risk factors for severe outcomes. High blood glucose is devastating for the metabolic and immune system. We know people with high blood sugar are very prone to infections. So that is one destiny for you. You're going to be on all of these expensive medications. Or what we could do is try to fix the upstream problem because insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes are completely reversible. Yes, they are completely reversible. They are possible to send into remission. And I've had success with many patients promoting this philosophy. I mean, who wants to be on expensive medications? Of course, it takes work, but that work is well worth it because your numbers will start to creep back down to normal. All you have to do is adopt a real food diet, cut out those ultra-processed foods, those sugars, any other unique food substances which may be inflammatory for you, and also throw in other things like intermittent fasting, throw in some exercise, but all of those things will reduce the insulin spikes that you keep having, that your grandparents and great-grandparents never had, and you will send your insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes into complete remission. I know what option I would want, but is that really emphasized enough in our current mainstream culture that is actually encouraging people to go on these drugs, to require glucose monitors? This is all unnatural. And if we think the numbers are bad now, you just wait for five to 10 years. This is the road we are on. Again, it is a bonanza for these big corporations that are making a ton of money from people getting sicker and sicker. But it doesn't have to be that way. If you have type 2 diabetes, speak with your doctor, if you can speak with your doctor, about how you can send it into remission naturally so you don't need these expensive medications. Of course, it's more hard work, but it is entirely worth it because you are fixing the upstream problem. The insulin way of dealing with type 2 diabetes is frequently a disaster. If you maintain the same diet, you are going to require more and more insulin. And remember, insulin is an anabolic hormone. It is those spikes of insulin which encourage fat storage, lipogenesis, and obesity. So even if you're talking about other things like weight loss, the goal should be to reduce insulin spikes. That is why intermittent fasting works so well. Thanks everyone for listening. Again, I think future generations are going to laugh at us that we treated type 2 diabetes a disease with too much insulin by what? Giving more insulin. So if you're one of these people, think very carefully and speak with your doctor. Again, I'm not saying that you should stop your insulin. That's not a good idea, but deal with the upstream problem, which is usually eating completely the wrong diet, high in carbohydrates, ultra processed foods and sugars. Thanks everyone for listening. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out my online academy and my uncensored platform. Those links are down below. Hit the like button if you like this video and the bell button for more similar videos in the future. Have a great weekend everyone and we will talk again very soon.